What is up everybody? So I got a topic for you today that I think won't take too much time for us to understand, pretty easy to understand, but also one that has a lot of applications and is really powerful. So those are our favorite kind of topics, the ones where they're pretty easy to grasp, but also have a lot of applications. Today's topic is called point-wise mutual information, and I'm gonna motivate it as I usually do. So let's say you're building a search engine for animal lovers. So I got my little cat here, my little dog here. And one problem you run into is that you want to know which terms to use to index all of the documents that are powering your search engine. So when a user comes and searches some kind of query, you're going to expect to get some results, some documents back. Now, the way that these documents come back very quickly is that you've indexed words that go to which documents contain those words. So when the user comes and searches dog, you already know all the documents that contain the word dog and can quickly return those to the user. Now, you want to index not just single words on each document, but also what are called bigrams, or two words that appear together in the document. The thing is, when we move from indexing just single words in documents to multiple words in documents, the space of the problem blows up quadratically. And so we want to only index the bigrams, which are going to give us the most use, which are actually phrases, which are things that people might actually search and logically belong together. So the question is, how do we figure out which bigrams we're going to index? For example, here's two bigrams that we could index. How do we feel about each one? One bigram is pet friendly. This, put a check mark here already, seems like a pretty good bigram to index because it's a logical grouping of two words. It's something that makes sense together. It's not simply just the sum of its parts. And so it would help to have pet friendly indexed on all of our documents. If someone comes and searches pet friendly air freshener, then we can immediately know that all the documents that contain pet friendly in them. Now, on the other hand, here's another just set of two words, want top. I don't really understand what this is trying to say. I don't think anyone would search this. It's not really a logical piece of two words. It doesn't mean anything more than the individual words. And so I probably would not want to index want top or any other combination of two random words that make no sense together. So this is just a little example here, but in general, we want some kind of system that's going to automatically tell us what makes a phrase special. So phrase here, we're simply defining as just two words in this order, W1 and then W2. Here we had W1 is pet and W2 is friendly or W1 is want and W2 is top. Well, what makes this a phrase rather than just a collection of two random words? And I would say, and the concept of pointwise mutual information would say that it's a phrase if W1 and W2 are more often used together than by random, than by random chance. So this is the main part of the video. If you understand this, all the math is going to be a breeze for you. We consider something a phrase if seeing these two things in this order W1 and then W2 happens much more often in some big body of text then we would expect it to by random chance alone. Under the hypothesis that W1 and W2 have nothing to do with each other, and anytime we do see them together, it's just purely based on random chance, not because there's actually some force that is making them show up together more often than not. And so that's the idea, that's what makes a phrase. And now we can get into the mathematics of pointwise mutual information, which really is not too tricky. We just need to define three quantities. The first is going to be called P of W1. This is the probability that in some very large piece of training data we're going to use for this pointwise mutual information, the probability that we see the word W1 or the probability that the word W1 is used. PW2 is just the same exact thing for W2, the probability that the word W2 is used. And now this guy, P of W1, W2, is the probability that in that same large piece of training text, could be like Wikipedia entries or some books that we're using for training data, the probability that the phrase W1, W2 is used. So if we look at all of the bigram phrases that appear in this large piece of text, what fraction of them are the phrase W1, W2? Now, by random chance, what's the probability that in this massive piece of text or in all these books we're using, What's the probability we would see W1 and W2 together by random chance? By random chance purely, or in other words, if we didn't have any reason to believe that W1, W2 was a phrase of any kind, the probability we would observe them together in a bigram 
is simply just going to be pw1 times pw2. Because that's exactly the assumption we make in probability when we assume two things are independent. We can just multiply their probabilities together. So now we can use all of these symbols we have on the page to construct a very logical ratio. And that ratio is going to be, the numerator is going to be p of w1 comma w2. And the denominator is going to be p of w1 times p of w2. So now we're going to pause one more time in this video and just make sense, make sure we understand what this ratio is and what high values or low values imply. If this ratio is very high, then that would mean that the numerator is very high relative to the denominator. So this is saying the numerator, the probability that the phrase w1, w2 is actually used in this giant piece of text that we observe is much, much higher than we would expect if these two things were just appearing together by random chance. That makes them much, much more likely that they're a phrase. Going back to our toy example here, if we consider the phrase pet friendly, that's one case where we would expect a pretty high ratio here. If, on the other hand, we had two terms that really had nothing to do with each other, like want top, then we would expect that they don't appear together any more often than we would expect by random chance alone, in which case the numerator and the denominator are pretty much the same number and the whole ratio works out to one. So the closer this ratio is to one, the more likely this is not a phrase, and the closer this number is to infinity, the more likely this is a phrase. And now this isn't exactly pointwise mutual information. We need to do one final transformation to it. And that is take the log base two of this ratio. So if we take the log base two of P W one comma W two on the numerator, and then P W one, P W two, on the denominator, then this is called pointwise mutual information or PMI. Of course, last thing, why did we take a log? I just said we do it. Well, this has a lot of different reasons that go into information theory, but one way you can think about it, one intuitive way you can think about it, is that if this ratio, let's say the numerator is two times the denominator, which means that the whole ratio is equal to two, then log base two of two is gonna give you equals to one. On the other hand, what's the opposite case of that? What's the opposite case of us getting that this is happening two times more than by random chance alone? Well, the opposite of that would be that it's happening half as probable as by random chance alone. And if it's happening half as probable as by random chance alone, then the numerator would be half of the denominator. So our ratio would be one half and log base two of a half is equal to negative one. And so by having this log, we reflect the fact that these two are exactly opposite cases. And so we get the one in this case and we get the negative one in this case. So they have the exact same magnitude, but opposite directions, which is what we would expect from our metric called pointwise mutual information. And so including the log base two just helps us see that more clearly. And so that's about it. That is the idea of pointwise mutual information. A very, in my opinion, easy to grasp, but also elegant and beautiful concept in information theory and data science which helps us solve a wide variety of problems. Because going back to how would we use pointwise mutual information to help us solve this motivating example? Well, now we would go over all the bigrams we could potentially have. Of course, that's gonna be way too many bigrams to store in our search index. We just wanna know what are the ones that actually matter. We would go ahead and calculate the pointwise mutual information for all of those bigrams. And the ones who have a pointwise mutual information that's very high, in other words, those where the words W1, W2 appear way more often than we would expect by random chance alone are exactly what we're going to call phrases. And it's exactly those phrases like pet friendly, but unlike want top that we want to index in our search engine. You don't have to even think about search engine. You can just use this to come up with what are phrases that are used in the English language or in my domain that I'm working in. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please feel free to leave any comments in the section below. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll catch you all next time.